The Status of Jesus in Islam Part 2 And Allah says, Forgot and mention, O Messenger, in the book revealed to you the story of Mary, peace be upon her, when she moved away from her family and stayed separately in a place to their east. Thus, she made for herself a veil from the people which would cover her, so that they cannot see her when she is worshipping her Lord. Then I sent Gabriel, peace be upon him, to her, thus he appeared to her in the form of a perfectly formed human. So she thought he has a malicious intention towards her. So when she saw him in the form of a perfectly formed human heading towards her, she said, I seek protection of the merciful from you that any harm should come to me from you, if you are pious and fear Allah. Gabriel, peace be upon him, said, I am not a human. I am only a messenger from your Lord who he has sent to you for me to give you a good pure child. Mary said surprisingly, How can I have a child when neither a husband nor anyone else has come near me nor am I an adulteress that I should have a child? Gabriel said to her, The matter is as you said, namely that no husband or anyone else has touched you nor are you an adulteress. However, your Lord said, To create a child without a father is easy for me. And it is so that the child granted to you is a sign for people of the power of Allah, and a mercy from me to them, due to the good they will achieve through him. And the creation of this child of yours is a fixed decree from Allah and written in the preserved tablet. So she conceived him after the angel blew into her, then she withdrew with him to a place far from the people. And the pangs of childbirth struck her and made her take refuge by the trunk of a date tree. Mary said, If only I had died before this day and I was something not even mentioned, so that bad is not thought of me. Then Gabriel called to her from the bottom of the valley, Do not grieve. Your Lord has made for you a spring of water beneath you from which you can drink. And hold the trunk of the tree and shake it, it will instantly drop fresh ripe dates on you. So eat of the ripe dates, drink of the water, and be pleased with your child and do not grieve. And if you see any person who asks you regarding the child, say to him, I have bound myself to silence for my Lord's sake, so will not speak to any person today. Then Mary came carrying her child to her people. Her people said to her out of shock, O oh Mary, you have committed a grave fabricated matter, by bringing a child without a father. O oh one who resembles Aaron, a righteous man, in worship, your father was not an adulterer nor was your mother. You are from a pure household known to be righteous, so how can you bring a child without a father? She pointed towards her son Jesus, peace be upon him, who was in the cradle. So the people said in surprise, how can we talk to a child who is in the cradle? Jesus, peace be upon him, said, I am the servant of Allah. He gave the gospel and made me one of eight prophets. And he made me a great benefit for the servants wherever I am. And he ordered me to perform prayer and give zakat for as long as I live. And he made me righteous to my mother. And he did not make me arrogant towards the obedience of my Lord nor did he make me disobedient to her. And safety from the Satans and his helpers is on me on the day of my birth, the day of my death and the day I shall be raised on the day of judgment. The Satan has no evil effect on me in th three frightening places. He who is described with these qualities is Jesus, son of Mary. And this discussion is the word of truth regarding him, not that which is said by the misguided who doubt and disagree in his affair. It does not befit Allah to have a son, exalted and free he is from this. When he intends something, it is enough for him to say regarding this thing, b, and it most definitely becomes. So he who is like this is free from having a son. And Allah, may he be glorified, is both my Lord and your Lord, so make worship sincere for him alone. This which I have mentioned to you is the straight path that leads to the pleasure of Allah. But the factions of Jews and Christians differed regarding the matter of Jesus, peace be upon him. The Jews said about him that he is a magician. Some Christians said about him that he is the son of Allah. Woe to those who differ regarding him, from witnessing the great day of judgment, due to its scenes, reckoning and punishment. How horrible is what they will hear and see on the day of judgment and how severe it will be for them. And how strange will be their condition which you will see. However, the oppressors in this worldly life are clearly misguided from the straight path. They will not prepare for the afterlife until it will suddenly come to them whilst they are in their wrongdoing. Quran 19:16-38. Translators note, this does not refer to the Aaron, the brother of Moses, but rather to a pious man who lived at the time of Mary. Allah, the exalted, says. 
and, mention, the one who guarded her chastity. So we blew into her, garment, through our angel, Gabriel, and we made her and her son a sign for the worlds, Quran 21 hours 91 minutes. This true story explains what happened to Mary after God had raised her in a good manner with the care she received from that noble prophet, i.e. Zechariah, and after she had become reputed as a pious worshipper that was pure, chaste and honorable. So the time, which God designated to carry out his will by creating Jesus in the manner he informed us he would, had now come. Then we sent Gabriel, peace be upon him, to her, thus he appeared to her in the form of a perfectly formed human. So she thought he has a malicious intention towards her. Translators note, throughout the Q'an, Allah, God, refers to himself in the plural form, such as by saying we, us and our. This, from a literary standpoint, is to show his grandeur and majesty, similar to the royal we used in the English language. It does not mean that Allah refers to himself as being a pluralistic God or that he is part of a trinity, etc. This refers to the angel Gabriel. So at the time this, miraculous, event took place, this pure and chaste woman had set out to devote herself to worshipping God. And she had placed a screen in front of her for this purpose in order to protect her honour and chastity and so that she can establish her worship. Then lo and behold, a human that was well proportioned in his form and beauty suddenly appeared before her. So she demonstrated the signs of her chastity and modesty in this instance, saying, I seek protection of the merciful from you that any harm should come to me from you, if you are pious and fear Allah. Such a statement could only come from the heart of a true believer that seeks refuge and solace in God during times of grief and difficulty. And in her saying, she reminds and alerts, the angel in the form of a man, to be fearful of God. All of this was done in order to repel what occurred to her from this frightening and dangerous ordeal. Then the noble messenger, Gabriel, gave her news that caused her fear to be removed and her heart to find tranquility. Gabriel, peace be upon him, said, I am not a human. I am only a messenger from your Lord who he has sent to you for me to give you a good pure child. Mary said surprisingly, How can I have a child when neither a husband nor anyone else has come near me nor am I an adulteress that I should have a child? This is the normal way that children are conceived, i.e. through cohabitation. So the angel informed her. Gabriel said to her, The matter is as you said, namely that no husband or anyone else has touched you nor are you an adulteress. However, your Lord said, To create a child without a father is easy for me. And it is so that the child granted to you is a sign for people of the power of Allah, and a mercy from me to them, due to the good they will achieve through him. And the creation of this child of yours is a fixed decree from Allah and written in the preserved tablet. So creating the universe and all that it contains within it is something easy for God, as He says, O oh people, your creation and your resurrection for accountability and requital on the day of judgment is as easy as creating and resurrecting just one soul. Indeed, Allah hears everything, hearing one sound does not preoccupy him from hearing another, he also sees everything, seeing one thing does not preoccupy him from hearing another either. And likewise, creating something and resurrecting it does not preoccupy him from creating and resurrecting another. Qa'in 31 colon 28 So this spirit blew, the life of Jesus, into her. And he was the angel Gabriel whom God sent for this great task to carry out his command. So she conceived him and withdrew with the baby in her womb to a faraway place. There she gave birth to her child and was faced with the problem that any chaste and honorable woman like her I would feel, i.e. slander of being a fornicator, so she wished she were dead. Then there came that which removed her fear and anxiety, the baby Jesus, cried out to her from below her, saying, Grieve not, your Lord has provided a water stream unto you. These were signs and miracles that increased her reliance, tranquility and faith in the fact that God would protect her, demonstrate that she was free from any claims of fornication. And manifest her honor and nobility. So all she needed to do was point to this infant that the slander is used as a means to accuse her of fornication. They said, how can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? So this child, whose speech they disregarded, startled them while he was still in his cradle through that amazing miracle, saying to them. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, I am the servant of Allah. He gave the gospel and made me one of eight prophets. 
and he made me a great benefit for the servants wherever I am. And he ordered me to perform prayer and give zakat for as long as I live. And he made me righteous to my mother. And he did not make me arrogant towards the obedience of my Lord nor did he make me disobedient to her. And safety from the Satans and his helpers is on me on the day of my birth, the day of my death and the day I shall be raised on the day of judgment. The Satan has no evil effect on me in th3 frightening places. These are truly some of Allah's incredible verses, in which he discusses the way Jesus was conceived and born and how he absolved his virgin mother from slander. Then these amazing verses provide an explanation of the mission and message of Jesus. Part of Jesus' great message was to clarify to the people that he was a servant of God, and remarkably, this was the first thing he said when he spoke to the people, from the cradle. The second thing he mentioned in his speech was his message, saying, He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. Then the third thing he talked about was the effects of his call. And he has made me blessed wherever I may be. Then he went on to explain his religious laws and the religious laws of those messengers that came before him, saying, and he has enjoined on me prayer and the giving of charity for as long as I live. Then he talked about his beautiful characteristics, such as being righteous and dutiful, and how God did not give him the characteristics of the arrogant and wretched. And, he has enjoined me, to be dutiful to my mother, and he has not made me arrogant and wretched. Then Allah comments on everything he mentioned previously about Jesus and his mother, saying, Such is Jesus, son of Mary. This is a statement of truth about which they doubt. He who is described with these qualities is Jesus, son of Mary. And this discussion is the word of truth regarding him, not that which is said by the misguided who doubt and disagree in his affair. This is the true and definitive statement from the Lord who created Jesus and everyone else the one who is all-knowing and all-aware of every minuscule and magnificent aspect of this universe and mankind, amongst whom was Jesus. Allah has indeed stated the truth about him, which cannot be blemished by the smallest speck of fossil that the liars from amongst those doubtful and deviant individuals state about him. Allah has spoken the truth about him, which every person with an uncorrupted intellect and pure innate understanding will accept. This is also what all of the previous religious laws spoke about and that which the believers adhered to. So all of these events that occurred, such as the angel Gabriel breathing into, the sleeve of, Jesus' mother, then her conceiving him and giving birth to him. The pains and hardships his mother faced because of that, her being absolved from these hardships by Allah causing her child to speak from the cradle. Which proved that she was free from blame and which also proved that he was one of the slaves of God that he chose to be his prophet and messenger and to receive his book. As well as his being mandated with the same tremendous religious laws that the prophets and messengers before him were mandated with, such as establishing the prayer. Giving charity and being dutiful all of this is the established and confirmed truth. And any claims and allegations that contradict this are false. So the attacks and accusations forged by the Jews against Jesus and his mother are all lies. And the claims made by their opponents the Christians, with respect to Jesus alleging that he was God or the Son of God or part of a divine trinity are also fostered and misguidance. Which no upright intellect, religious law or innate nature will accept. The truth with regard to this matter is that which has been stated by God, the one who created Jesus and everyone else from beginning to end, jinn and mankind, for the purpose of worshipping him. And he is the one who chose him as a slave and messenger, just as he chose others to carry and convey his message to mankind so that they may actualize the objective for which they were created and that is to worship God alone and to make the religion sincerely for his sake. Jesus indeed conveyed his message in the best of manners, and he was at the forefront from his nation of those who worshipped and submitted themselves to God. Speaking the truth openly from the time when he was in his cradle to his years of manhood up to the point when God raised him up to him. Translators note, contrary to Christian beliefs, Muslims believe that Jesus was not crucified, but rather that someone else was made to resemble him and crucified instead of him. The Qur'an states that he was raised up to the heavens where he will await until the day when he will be sent back to earth towards the end of time. Allah says, and because of their, Jews, saying boastfully. We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, messenger of God. But they killed him not nor did they crucify him. But rather the resemblance of Jesus was put in another man, and they killed that man. And those who differ therein are full of doubts. They have no certain knowledge, they follow nothing but conjecture, for surely they killed him not. Rather, Allah raised him up, body and soul, unto himself. And Allah is ever all-powerful, most wise.
and there is none of the people of the scripture, i.e. Jews and Christians, except that he will surely believe in him, that he was really a messenger of God, before his, Jesus, death. And on the day of resurrection he will be a witness against them. Qayn 4 colon 157-159 the Prophet Muhammad has prophesied that Jesus will return and judge mankind with justice. He will descend by the white minaret in the east of Damascus, placing his hands upon the wings of two angels. And will fight against the Antichrist, Dajjal, until he reaches him by the gate of Lud, present-day Israel, where he will kill him. This is the status of the Prophet and Messenger of God, Jesus, peace be upon him, in Islam and according to the Muslim nations. So this is the truth and anything else beside it is a lie and misguidance. God is not in need of begetting a son. Attributing a child to him is from the greatest forms of disbelief and misguidance, since it constitutes the highest level of insult and deficiency being ascribed to his honor. Greatness and Lordship. This is since everything apart from God, the Creator, can only be one of his creations, and all of his creations submit themselves to his honor and grandness and are mandated to worship him. Whereas God is divine and free of begetting a child, This is why Allah says to those who ascribe a child to him, and his speech is the truth. You, who say this, i.e. an evil statement, have indeed brought something monstrous. The heavens almost rupture because of this detested statement, the earth almost splits, and the mountains almost fall in ruins. All of this because they have attributed a son to the merciful. Allah is high above that by far. It is not befitting of the merciful to take a son as he is pure of that. There is no angel, human being or jinn in the heavens and earth but that he will come in submission to his Lord on the day of judgment. He has full knowledge of them and has numbered them exactly. Nothing of theirs is hidden from him. Each one of them will come to him on the day of judgment alone, without any helper or any wealth. QA 19,89-95 And he says, Say, O Messenger, he is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except him. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in his essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring, may he be glorified, nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born. Nor does he have any equal from his creation. Nor is there to him any equivalent. Qayn 112,1-4 Allah said, talking to Prophet Muhammad, and warned those who say, God has begotten a child. No knowledge have they of such a thing, nor their fathers. Abominable is the statement that comes out of their mouths. They utter nothing but a lie. Qayn 18 4 5. So anyone that claims that God has a son is speaking nothing but lies, regardless of whether they are Arabs, who say that the angels are God's daughters, or Buddhists and Brahmins. Who claim that for Buddha and Brahma, or the Christians, who claim that Jesus is the Son of God, God himself or part of a divine trinity. All of these are lies and fabrications on God. And in spite of this, all of these groups reject and deny each other, no group, amongst those mentioned above, accepts the views of their opponents. So the lies and fabrications are removed due to the fact that these groups all disbelieve in each other, and because of the fact that the Qur'an. Islam and Muslims disbelieve in them and their false claims, as do all upright minds and innate natures. And all that remains is the clear truth that God informed us of in his miraculous book which Fossid cannot enter whether from in front of it or behind it. This is the magnificent book, i.e. the Qur'an, which Allah uses to challenge the jinn and mankind to bring forth a book equal to it or ten chapters similar to it or at least one chapter similar to it. But they were unable to do this for more than fourteen centuries. And they will never be able to accomplish this until the day of judgment. Translators note, this is one of the greatest challenges of Allah and it proves that the Qur'an is truly a revelation from God. If one studies the history of Islam, he will see that Prophet Muhammad, an unlettered man from the lands of Arabia, 
challenged the hierarchical system of the pagan Arabs at that time with the pure religion of Islam, whose followers grew in numbers as the years progressed. This new religion, at that time was a direct threat to the power of the pagan Arabs who ruled over Makkah and led them to eventually wage war against him and his followers when their strength increased. Had Muhammad's religion and revelation from God been false, all these rulers had to do was hire the best poets and writers of their times to produce a book. Ten chapters or even one chapter similar to the Qur'an. By doing this, they would have avoided long wars, monetary loss, removal of power, imminent destruction and eventual humiliation. But the true fact is that they were not able to do it, since the Qur'an was revealed from God, and those, Arabs, who read it. For the most part saw its miraculous nature in terms of its written format, detail in description, and topics it covered, and accepted it as the true word of God. So what true and stronger proof is there than the fact that the neither the jinn or mankind were able to produce any part of that book that was brought by an unlettered man who could neither read or write, i.e. the Prophet Muhammad? This proves that whatever he said about Jesus is the truth, and everything beyond it is nothing but fossil. The point derived from this is that the Qur'an has given Jesus his due right and granted him the honorable position that he deserves. And it has ensured that he will always be mentioned truthfully in a Qur'an, revealed book, that is read repeatedly by Muslims in their homes and in their mosques. Since they recite verses from the Qur'an related to Jesus in their prayers. This is the case with all of the other prophets. And messengers of God. Shouldn't all of this that Islam and the Muslims adhere to serve as an invitation for the Christians, particularly the rulers, popes, priests, monks and educators amongst them, to reflect, ponder and re-examine their stance towards Muhammad and the great and miraculous book he came with, as well as their stance towards his followers who believed in Jesus as a prophet and messenger and in the, undistorted, scripture that was revealed to him. This would hopefully lead to them in turn showing respect and honor for Muhammad, and to being just towards him and giving him the position he deserves amongst the prophets and messengers. So where is the return of courtesy? Is it a return of friendly gesture that they put their hands in the hands of the Jews, who disbelieved in Jesus? Denied him and slandered him and his mother with the vilest of slanders and accusations. Aren't they the ones who held the worst form of enmity towards him from the time he was born up to this very day of ours? Aren't they the ones who treated his followers with oppression and transgression, the likes of which would make one's skin shiver? And they corrupted his creed and his religion as part of their scheme and plot, making Jesus, may Allah free him from this, into a myth of him being God or the Son of God or part of a divine trinity. Corrupting and nullifying his true message. And they made his religion and his followers into a joke and an amusement for those with common sense, let alone the most foolish of people. The plotters and schemers have changed it into a religion of a pagan myth, which those with true common sense would feel ashamed of.